Well, hey guys, how you doing? Hope you're having a great day. We're having a great day here. We are talking some more spark safety. And it's not just spark, it's general kind of drone safety. So this is kind of our third video in this series. This is the one I think you're going to be most interested in. And that is, what do we do before we take our spark up and actually fly it? So some of that is while we have the spark up in the air, we bring it up to hover and we do some check. But before we get to that point, we are going to do several physical checks. We're going to do checks of the drone itself. We're going to do checks of the remote control. We are going to do checks of our phone or our tablet to make sure that we are being as safe as possible. And so this follows uh, what we normally do. We do usually do some virtual scouting of a location of wherever we're going. Uh, we do a physical check. We look for tall trees, we look for telephone poles, we look for power lines, we look for buildings, we look for all sorts of physical obstacles that we don't want to run this into. And we get an idea for where we're going to fly it. But before we actually put it up in the air, we're going to do some physical checks of the device. So first off, we need the propellers to be working correctly. We can't get this thing up in the air without these propellers. So I always just do a physical, just kind of pull on it to make sure that each one of these is on there good and safe. And that is pretty simple to do. Next thing I do is I'll double check the battery that I have in. I'll make sure that I've got my four lights lit up there to make sure that I've got a full battery. Or maybe I know I've got a partial battery and I just want to finish it off. But I'm looking to make sure that I know how much juice there is in this particular battery that I've got in and that it is registering as expected. Now one of the other things I will also do is I will do kind of a physical check to make sure that it's on there. So I'll kind of push it on there tight, make sure that it's, it doesn't click again. I'm going to try and pull on it there, not on the releases, I'm just going to try and pull on it and make sure it doesn't just slide right off. Now next thing I'm going to do is after I do that, make sure everything's securely on there. I'm going to make sure that my camera gimbal is on there. The reason we're really putting our Spark up in the air or our Mavic or our Phantom is really because of this thing right here most of the time. You know, sometimes we want to just get up and watch it, you know, run around in the sky, but most of the time we're, we're wanting to see what's on here. So we just make sure that that's on there good. Now, you don't want to tug on that, that uh, too hard. Uh, you're just kind of making sure that it's on there and that it looks looks good now you're also looking to see is the lens clear or do i need to clean it and also on the spark you have this sensor here on the front this is the forward facing sensor you want to make sure that that is clean i've had bug guts on there i've had you know when you land in the grass i've had uh you know little chunks of grass on there from the propellers cutting some of the grass uh, you know all that sort of stuff so you just want to make sure that this forward facing sensor is clean now on the spark we also have sensors here on the bottom and so you want to make sure that those are clean and unobstructed as well and otherwise you're just looking over it and making sure that everything looks okay you want to make sure that you don't have any cracks in your arms you want to make sure that the rotors look good the uh, motors look good you don't have any wires sticking out anywhere and you're just giving it an overall kind of physical look and touch to make sure that everything looks like you expect it. So once we've done a physical check of our drone, then we're going to do a physical check of our remote control if we use one. Now I know a lot of you guys using the Spark do not have a remote control, but you know if you're doing a uh, Mavic Pro or a uh, Inspire or a Phantom or something like that, you of course are going to have a remote control and a lot of you guys are like me and just love to fly the spark with the remote control so one of the first things i'm going to do is i'm going to look at the antennas i'm just going to give them just a gentle tug just to make sure that they're on there you know i'm not physically trying to pull them off or anything i'm just making sure that they're connected good that they rotate around like i expect them to i'm pulling out device holders here making sure that they're attached good you know you want to be sitting there flying and then all of a sudden have your phone hit the floor or your tablet hit the floor that would be a bad day and then otherwise I'm just physically touching all of the different buttons and making sure that and, and sticks to make sure that they feel correct roller wheel uh, I'm just moving that making sure that feels good the buttons here on the end making sure those feel normal all the other buttons on there I'm making sure that they look normal the other thing I will check is this sport switch so I have on occasion when I haven't double checked that I have actually ended a flight with it in sport mode over here 
uh, to the right side. Then when I go to fly my next flight, some of the features are actually disabled within DJI GO app, and that's because the sport mode is still turned on. Now the Spark itself doesn't act like it's in sport mode. It's flying slower. It's not acting like it's in sport mode, but these special features like the gestures, quick shot, and all those other features like that will not be available. So you have to turn that back off, and then you'll see the, the button over here on the left side within the, the DJI GO activity that allows you to do that. And then the other thing I'm doing is I'm just just physically moving the sticks. Do the sticks feel right? If I pull them over, do they come back and center? You know, you're just doing an overall quick check and it took me a minute or two here to, to, to discuss this and, and describe what I'm doing, but this is really like a 10 second type of activity. I'm just double checking and making sure that it physically looks good. And then the last thing I do is I'll check its battery. So I'll click the power button there and I'll make sure that the appropriate number of lights light up here. So I know that I had just charged this this morning and so I was expecting four lights so I would expect that. This remote control actually lasts a long time so you know you don't have to be at four bars to start your flights. You know it's just a good idea to get a feel for how much juice do you have left in your remote control. Now the last thing that I check is my device. So in this case I'm using an iPhone. It's got iOS 10.3.3 uh, right now which which is the latest version. Really all I'm doing is making sure that power button works, the DJI GO app is there, and there is space on the device, some storage space for the cached videos that will be streaming back when, when I do uh, videos on the Spark. Uh, one of the reasons I think that that's a good safety feature, and it's not necessarily a safety feature, but it's kind of a cover your butt, it's kind of an investigation tool, is if your Spark flies away and you can't find it anywhere, well if you were recording and it's streaming that video back to here and cache, then you've got record of what happened and so you can send that off to the DJI support team and that gives you some more some more evidence of the behavior that you were seeing when it flew away or when it crashed or whatever happened. You know, just uh, making sure that you're able to cache the video on your device. Plus the other thing that I think is cool is that when I'm flying uh, and I'm not uh, doing the video for you guys, a lot of times I'm talking, you know, and I don't have these cameras on. I like that it records the audio onto the device as well as part of the video. And then it's kind of my mental notes on flying. Maybe I'll, I'll make a note of, oh, I really like this location. Or, hey, the next time you come back to this location, remember to do this thing, fly here and do this or hey uh, you know check the telemetry what was going on when this happened or you know there's a lot of different reasons I like to, to verbally uh, record things as part of that video stream and the audio on there so I think that that just making sure you have some space on there for that is fantastic okay so now that we've done some physical check of our devices of all the hardware we've got involved now we're going to start turning things on getting them connected so i'm going to go ahead and turn on the remote control i'm going to turn on the spark one of the things i'm looking for is that there is this red flashing light right here this will turn green once it, com it starts communicating with the spark itself so it is solid red right now so just turn green see that right here I'll go in and make sure and connect my Wi-Fi to the Spark RC if it hasn't already. A lot of times if you're already out and about and you're not around another Wi-Fi connection, you will automatically connect to the Spark RC. So then I'll just launch DJI Go. Once they're turned on, things are communicating. First thing I'm doing once everything is connected is I'm looking at the aircraft status screen in here. And I'm just looking to make sure that everything is saying that it is normal. I wanna make sure that the compass calibration isn't uh, complaining about anything. IMU calibration isn't complaining about anything. And I'm just wanting to make sure that everything is normal as expected. Flight mode is GPS. And then the next thing is, is I wanna make sure that it is actually registering the video from the Spark. You can see that it is, as I move the Spark around, it's registering on my screen on my device. Then we start checking into the settings that we want. Most of the time when I'm taking off, I wanna make sure that we are in GPS mode. So I wanna make sure that we've got 
ready to go in green here and that we do not have any error messages popping up and I want to see that it's in GPS mode. I look to see how many satellites it's registered. In this case, we've got 13. Right now, my sensors, my obstacle sensors are turned off. You can see there is a red right there and that's just because the last time I was flying, I had turned that off. I generally, when I'm taking off, would like to have the sensors turned on. So I'm gonna go back and turn that on right now. So I'm making sure I got a good signal. I'm looking at most of the stuff on that top bar there. I want to make sure I've got a good signal. It's registering that I've got the appropriate amount of battery that I would expect, that I'm connected to a decent amount of GPS satellites, and that I've got no error messages. So all of that is good. Now one of the next things I'll do is when I point the spark roughly north, I want to make sure that it's showing in here that it's roughly north. When I point it to the south, I want to make sure that it's roughly pointing to the south. So that's one of the checks you can do on the ground before you actually take it off and put it up in the air. So then one of the things I usually check is the return to home altitude. So right now that is set at 30 meters for me, roughly 100 feet up, but that is something you're going to want to adjust for your environment, right? So if you're working in a canopy or inside or something like that, well, return to home, you don't want to go up and have it run up into the canopy or something above you, right? So that's something you really wanna uh, just look at and adjust as appropriate appropriate for whatever you're setting. Now one of the things I'll end up doing is going and checking my Wi-Fi to make sure that we don't have any interference going on. So over here on in our settings we'll go to the Wi-Fi and you'll see that I've got one blue, I'm on 149 is blue and then there's a 153 is stable there but I don't see a whole bunch of red all over the place uh, which is good because I don't want to see whole bunch of other interference now if you guys are in you know downtown Manhattan or something like that and you look at that you know you're gonna have all kinds of crazy Wi-Fi going on there so uh, the good thing is is I'm out in the middle of nowhere so I should not have Wi-Fi interference going on but that's just something that I will go and take a quick look at all right so then after I've just kind of done a quick sanity check and again I'm taking you know a couple minutes or so to talk to you about these individual things but these are really like 10 to 30 second checks, right? I did a 10 second physical check of this, maybe a five second physical check of my device, of my remote control and my device. And then I do just kind of a, a 15 to 20 second check of the different settings within the DJI GO app once it's actually turned on. And I do kind of a, a 10 to 15 second check probably of some of the, the, the major settings and do a status check to make sure we got no errors and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's really, really quick. You know, there's not a lot of effort involved and this isn't going to delay you in getting your drone up in the air. These are things that will help you be safe, be responsible, and hopefully prevent maybe some flyaways, right? If you're getting compass calibration errors on here but you don't pay attention to it or you're getting Wi-Fi interference errors or whatever, and you go ahead and put your drone up in the air anyways, well, you're more likely to have flyaways or have a drop out of the sky or, you know, who knows what, crashes or, you know, it's, things probably just aren't going to work quite like you expect. And so just spending that extra minute or two up front doing some of those checks is good. All right, so after we've gone through all those different activities, check the physically check settings and so on, then what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and put our drone up in the air. So I'm going to use the uh, double tap on the battery to palm launch. And then once it's up in the air, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and I'm going to physically check each of the inputs. So I'm going to make sure that when I tell it rise up, that it goes up. And when I tell it to go down, it goes down. When I tell it to, to roll over to the, to the right, it goes right. When I tell it to go left, it goes left, so on and so forth. So I'm just going to go through and make sure that, that it's functioning like I expect. And again, this is like a 10 or 15 second maybe activity, maybe 5 to 10 second activity. And it just makes sure that I've got control over it. That while, it's, while I'm not giving any inputs, that it's hovering fairly stable. So sometimes I will use the case from the Spark and I'll set this on there to launch from. But most of the time, honestly, I just launch from my hand. In this case, I'm going to just do a palm launch. I'm going to do the double tap on the battery get it up in there and then we're going to do our checks that all of our inputs are, are being registered appropriately by the spark. All right. 
So one of the first things that I do is I check to make sure that, especially when I'm in GPS mode, I make sure that the return to home point has been set. If that doesn't happen, then I generally won't do anything. I won't even put it this far away from me. I will keep it right close to me to make sure that I'm good. And if it doesn't automatically do it, I will try and go into the settings and manually do it to make sure. Uh, and if I don't get a good home point recorded, then I'm not gonna uh, go anywhere at all. And then the other thing I'll do is I'll pull up in the, the map here to make sure that on the map that you can pull up that it is registering a valid location. Maybe it can, if the GPS is messed up, it might set a return to home point, but if it thinks it's in New Zealand and you're in uh, California in the US, well, that doesn't really help you a whole lot, right? I'll just double check that map and make sure that, that the home point that it recorded is uh, pretty much where I think it, it should be. Uh, you know, in this park and so on. So it's just another quick sanity check. It takes you two seconds to help you be a little bit more safe. All right, so you can see that the spark has just been sitting here hovering just fine. It's moving around a little bit. We got a touch of wind, so it's, it's moving around a little bit. But one of the first things that I'll do is I'll, I'll test all my input. So I'll do down, up, yaw to the right, yaw to the left, forward, backwards, roll to the left, roll to the right. So that just makes sure that all of my stick inputs are being registered appropriately. I'll slide the sport switch and I'll make sure that the sport comes up on there. I'll put it back, make sure it goes back to GPS. Roll the gimbal, make sure that if I tell it to go down, it goes down. If I tell it to go up, it goes up. You know, that really is a safety feature, right? If it's stuck down and you're trying to fly and you can't see in front of you that a tree's coming, well, you know, that's, that's a bit of, a bit of an issue. So those are really the things that I do. The other part that I would say is that for me, I like to hit record pretty much. And most of the time, I'll actually hit record before I launch it. I like to record the launch. So it's kind of an investigation tool to have at recording, right? If something happens when you take off and it starts flying away immediately and you can't grab it or something, you've got it recorded what was going on and that behavior. So it's kind of a way to help you debug and investigate what happened and you have to get uh, DJI support involved, you know, it's a way to be able to, to help them investigate as well. Like I said, I'm really long-winded. You know, it takes me a while to describe some of these things, but if that whole process took you longer than two minutes, I would be shocked. Uh, most of the time, I would guess it's probably about a minute tops. For me, once I pull out my spark to the time I'm in the air, it's probably less than a minute, I would guess, to run through that process right there. So it's really not a big deal. Once you do it, you get a process with, uh, with your brand new uh, Spark user or a brand new drone pilot, maybe print you out a checklist and walk through it. And then once, you, once you've done it enough times, it just becomes habit, right? All right, so the wind's picking up a little bit so you can see Spark start to dance around a little bit more, but the video's rock steady on here. So that's... Uh, that's pretty cool. Well, I hope this was uh, useful for you. I hope, uh, hope you guys are being safe out there. You're being responsible. You're doing your best to uh, uh, not be one of those drone users that's causing problems and causing the government and authorities to start making up all kinds of crazy rules. We don't need any more of that. So do your best to try and prevent flyaways and crashes and all those things by just doing doing some quick uh, pre-flight routines. Make sure that you're good to go before you actually put it up in the air. I hope you're having a fantastic day. If not, make it a fantastic day. Get out, go somewhere you haven't been, take a friend, take a family member, and make it a great day. All right, we'll catch you guys later. Thank you.